Okay, I think we've got the plane loaded. We kind of, we did a better job on the way here than on the way back. Some of it's kind of like, we just shoved it in. Uh, but anyway, there's our, there's our dead grass spot. And uh, anyway, back to Wichita. First thing you do before you even move out of your parking spot and definitely before you crank up your engine is monitor the ATIS on 121.75 to make sure the airport is open and ready for departure and which runways are in use. The ATIS will tell you which runways are in use and in our case we were departing from runway 27. It's a relatively simple procedure. You fly the heading of 270 through 360 at or below 1300 MSL until clear of the class Delta airspace. In going the opposite direction on runway 9, your departure heading windows are a little bit smaller from heading 040 through 090. The only caveat to this is, is there's no altitude restriction because you're heading out over the water and most pilots want to get as much altitude as they can when flying over water. On runway 18 right departure, you simply fly runway heading of 180 at or below 1300 MSL until you're clear of the class delta airspace. On runway 18 left departure, you simply fly heading 150 at or below 1300 MSL until clear of the class delta airspace. A little trickier is if you're departing runway 36 left, you have to turn right to a heading 150 prior to being adjacent to the ATC tower and stay at or below 1300 MSL until clear of the class delta airspace. The reason for that is so you don't impede the traffic going in and out of the seaplane base. So now that you've listened to the ATIS and to determine which runway you're departing and that in fact the airport is open for departures, uh, you can go ahead and get some help pushing out. Uh, they don't like you to crank out from your parking spot, kind of get out into the alleyway and get cranked up. Put your VFR sign in the window and the line people will guide you to the appropriate runway. VFR traffic, um, fly heading at 270 to 360 out of below 1300 until clear of class Delta airspace. Use caution for traffic left to right at 1800. Up the horn, Ron. Stop. Stop over here, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Since we know the south side, you're next. Just oh, there we go. Control runway 27, be ready to go. BFR traffic, fly heading 270 to 360, out of below 1300. Use caution for traffic, uh, left to right out of 1800. My six on the runway, runway 27 clear for takeoff. My six AV on the runway 27 line of weight. VFR traffic flight heading 270 to 360, out of below 1300, and they'll clear of class Delta airspace. Use caution for traffic left to right at 1800. Submarine 2 Delta Delta, runway 27 clear for takeoff. Low wing on the south side, runway 27 right side line of weight. My tail driver on the south side, runway 27 left side line of weight. My uh, tail dryer on the right side, runway 27, clear for takeoff, not police. Number for one mic off, runway 27, line up away, we're ready to go. Mark Teddy, runway 27, line up away. First two out 39s, ready to go. I'm up on first oh, Okay, I I understand that, but I'm not sure which one is this Is the uh, red, white, and blue with Lear, uh, I'm sorry, the L39, is he with you with flight? Negative. Mm -hmm. Seven in the camouflage are ready. That's right. Yeah, we're, all, we're ready. Mark Eddie's ready to go. He's coming out. Listen, you guys need to listen up. Runway 27, line up and wait, Mark Eddie. He's not up on freak. He's not on freak. Okay, Mark Eddie, just hold. 2L239, get on position. Bring it home. 2L39, line up and wait. Boy, they ain't happy with them, are they? The white one needs to stay. The white one needs to stay. The red, white, and blue one needs to stay. We're together. Okay, I just asked if the white one was with you and you said no. Uh, these two are together, so I can. Mark Eddie, Jets on 120, it's up Mark Eddie, Roger, just hold. 
My low wing uh, just departing off to the right, we have a uh, Sanchez coming your way. Alright, my group of two L39s, we're with you, clear for takeoff. Oh, look at, look at all of them lined up. I know it. Mark Eddie, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 777 Albatross, runway 27, line up the wing. 777 Albatross, 27, clear for takeoff. My tail wing, or the uh, tail dragger on the south side, 27, line up the wing. T51, you're gonna go after one on the downwind. T51, 27, line up the wing. Dallas Dow, 27, clear for takeoff. My two chipmunks and a bird dog, 27, line up the wing. All right, my two chipmunks and my bird dog, 27, clear for takeoff. Do have a jet traffic, uh, just about a mile and a half final. They are clear for takeoff. Two chipmunks and that bird dog, go. We're going. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you in a little bit. I'm closer, babe. <laughs> I know it. My blue RV, runway 27, line the wing. Blue RV, 27, clear for takeoff. Take off, see ya. Texan on the south side, 27, line up the wing. Texan, 27, clear for takeoff. 99 Charlie, runway 27, line up the wing. 99 Charlie, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 76 November, left side, 27, line up the wing. 38 Victor, right side, 27, line up the wing. The 38 Victor, runway 27, clear for takeoff. One car leading on runway 27 on the right side, line up the wing. A1 Sierra, runway 27, clear for takeoff. My tail dragger, red nose on the south side, 27 left side, line up away. One Charlie Lima, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 07 Bravo, runway 27, right side, line up away. My tail dragger, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Mooney, 27, left side, line up away. My uh, tail dragger just fired, you can get offset to the right. One kilo golf, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 07 Bravo, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Low wing on the south side, 27, line up the wing. Or 27, Whiskey, runway 27, clear for takeoff. That's right. On the south side, you're going to be next, hold short 27. I guess. Hold short 27. <laughs> south of the Cessna, Red Nose on the south side, 27 on the right side, line up the wing. My second blue looks like a blue nose Cessna, 27 on the left side, line up the wing. Two Juliet Romeo, you up? Affirmative and ready. Two Juliet Romeo, squawk 1304, up to but hold short to runway 27. 1304 on the code and hold short of 27, two Juliet Romeo. Red stuff, the 27, clear for takeoff. Blue Sirius, right side, 27, line up away. Blue Sirius on the south side, 27 on the right side, line up away. Give me the Bonanza. No, you're on the north side, Bonanza. Zero pop echo, blue set to 27, clear for takeoff. Nine Alpha Bravo, 27, line up and wait. Line up and wait, nine Alpha Bravo. Who's going to Basler? The Blue Sirius. Blue Sirius is going to Basler. All right, we'll get these guys out of your way for you. All right, my Blue uh, Sirius, you're going to come across 27, but you're going to veer off to the right. There's a grass taxiway just to the right side of that uh, pink shirt. 9 Alpha Bravo, 27, clear for takeoff. 4 4 Victor, runway 27, line up the wing. Aircraft departing via far off of runway 27, flying 270 to 360 at or below 1,300 until clear the Delta. 4 4 Victor, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 738, runway 27, line up the wing, be ready to go. Traffic, 6 o'clock, 1,100 feet below. Aircraft, once you're clear of the class Delta, do not turn to the southeast and overfly Fisk or Fond du Lac, please. Oh. My uh, two yaks on the south side, hold short to 27, are you flight to 2? Right to 2. Thank you. November 2, Julia Romeo, runway 27, line up and wait. Runway 27, line up and wait to Julia Romeo. Traffic, 6 o'clock, 1 mile, 100 feet below. All right, let's watch out for people coming in. I know, that's where I'm. 27, line up and wait.
Flight of 2 EX, runway 27, clear for takeoff. That one over there. We're on the south side, 27, line up the wing. All right, let's uh, get on at some altitude now, right? We're clear, right? All right. All right, uh, my uh, performer, I want you to make a right on 27 taxi to 523, make a left and file the flagman. Traffic around us looks clear, too. Are you ready? Ready? Traffic. Seven o'clock, one mile, four hundred feet above. It's been easy to spot over there. Traffic, nine o'clock, one mile, same altitude. You saw a spare craft over flying left to right. At this part, you're at 1,800. We are right up here. Yeah, we're clear of everything now. Oh, I see him. He's way down there, Ron. Uh, right off our nose. Just barely off our nose. Oh, I see him now. He's going this way. I was, I was talking. I was thinking he was... Aircraft fire 2718, or fly heading 270360 out of 1300 feet of clearance Delta airspace. Use caution for overhead traffic left or right at 11 o'clock, 1 mile, 700 feet below. Traffic around us looks clear, clear for takeoff. Traffic around us looks clear, clear for takeoff. Be a while before we get out of the traffic. I know it. Well, that was a fun departure <laughs> getting out of there. I don't know how much gas we burned, just not five went down. No. There's almost four gallons. Oh wow! Yeah, we because we were saying my, my feet were getting tired holding the brake because it was starting to load up a little bit. So I had to give it idle it up whenever we stopped. Then I had to bring it when we taxi so I wouldn't drag at the brake. Then we'd stop and I'd run it up a little bit. But it was real smooth getting out of here though. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. When I say 1,300 feet, we're there. You hit that pretty quick. <laughs> Uh, exactly. No, I noticed the plane in front of us. He kind of went up, and then he, whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, I was kind of there, because I was kind of watching him. Yeah. And, I mean, it's my own fault. I wasn't quite paying enough attention. I was like, okay, because I was kind of wanting to follow him a little bit. Then I looked down and went, oh, we're almost 14. Two, three, down. Oh, I don't know what we can say about our experience that it would not take the whole trip back. Yeah, and, and a lot of that's going to be said in, you know, you know, previous videos, but uh, all I got to say is if you've never been, I go. Oh, and um, first day was real good. It's not just super crowded. Um, that was a like, great choice to fly in that day. Especially if you've never done it before. Uh, that way the, the note on reserve back and to do the fifth arrival, uh, but it wasn't really super crowded. Friday gets a little more crowded-er crowded and then Saturday it really picks up but uh, I mean it was funny because Sunday evening we're looking at each other and you said man I'm having a great time and it hadn't even started yet I know it, I know it. We, the, the people it was just the the sense of community of everybody we were camping around yeah, yeah. that sort of thing so um, yeah uh Gosh, we could start with Thursday and just start just talking about everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was great. Like I said, all of that be on previous, so, you know, I don't want to rehash it all, but uh, uh, we're, we're kind of ready to get home, but I wasn't ready to leave either, so. Yeah. Okay, for first time campers, what's your key messages or recommendations? Okay, we want to, you want to be on the North 40 if you can. That was the, we visited the south and the north was just convenient to everybody. And uh, with us arriving on Thursday, we were closer to the front, which meant we were in a great location to just walk to all the, the uh, forums and everything like that. And plus we were near the bathhouse and the little store and the little cafe. So, you know, that I think was the takeaway as far as us arriving early. We could have arrived on Friday, I think, and still had a pretty parking place. Yeah. Now, now, 
to be fair, the South 40 has installed more bathhouses oh, yeah. yeah, and all that. But as far as being closer to the the, the hub of activity, right. Uh, right. and you're real close, There's they got some holes or, you know, sections out of the gate. You can just walk across the street and, and go shopping. Oh, yes, that was the other thing, trying to get into town. That, that's that's what I recommend yeah. the North 44. All the restaurants off-site are real convenient. And if you do arrive on Thursday, you've got to know that you're going to have to go off-site pretty much to eat or to get it, because, unless you bring something. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and so, and, and so, but my gosh, the food on-site, all of it was good. It's very expensive, but... It, uh, but that's what you expect at a, a place like this. They're having to set up and bring in food, but it was good. It, 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 was, it was all good, and I can't I can't talk enough good about those donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Janice this morning said, "I'm glad we didn't discover those until a couple of days ago, because we'd have been eating those all along." It makes them fresh. They're these cake donuts, and they're just. They're great. They're fabulous. They're the best ones I've ever had. Too. I mean, donuts normally when you tear them apart, you're tearing them apart. Kind of crumbly, like it, these, these just snap apart. I mean, just yeah, yeah, they're crispy on the outside, soft on the oh, they're just they, good. They're really good. Very light, fluffy. Yeah, but that, those are great. Every morning we just have happened to get them warm. <laughs> yeah, well, we we're there early enough. They're fresh out, and so uh, and it's their own recipe. They make them. Yeah. They're really, really good. All right, I'm sitting here looking at our uh, VFR departure procedures. We're going to leave tomorrow, and we had brought like peanut butter and crackers and stuff to eat for breakfast, but uh, we discovered these donuts at the cafe on the grounds in the North 40, and they're scattered all over. These things are wonderful. They're creamy. Look at these things. They're very crispy and they're light and flaky on the inside. They're absolutely the best donuts I've ever had. I mean, bar none. And, and of all places, at Oshkosh Fly-In. I mean, it's unreal what you'll find here. Diamonds in the rough everywhere. Uh, as far as uh, camping goes, the, uh, the air mattress, the size tent that we had, it was all good. We slept very comfortably. Our only problem was it was uh, out of the ordinary for it to be it's cold. As, as, yeah, I'll say cold because it was down in the uh, upper, upper 50s a couple of mornings. Uh, the first night it was like 52. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody said how hot it is, how hot it is. So we just brought a sheet and a blanket. Yeah, and I thought, okay, the first night we may, we're not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep real well anyway, and so I thought we'd be okay, but in the hindsight, we should have brought one of those sleeping bags to have covered up with, you know. Okay, I mean, it, I mean, it was, it's a summer tent, and, and, and so, you know, you could not seal it completely, it just has the overhangs over the mesh, you know, the, the bug mesh, and so the air can kind of freely get in, yeah. but, uh, but I'd rather be a little cold than a little too hot, although I love hot weather during the day. I just like it cooler when we sleep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, that's that's the thing. Uh, another bit is don't get a tent that just fits the mattress. Hi. If you get a queen-size mattress, get at least a 10-foot tent. Hi. Well, you got a little walking space, and the smaller mattress, the tent comes in. Hi. You're rubbing your elbows on the tent when you roll over. So that was good. Um, as far and also, I had found on Amazon these two little um, LED rechargeable lanterns, and so those were great just to have for some ambient light in there at night. Because if you come in in the dark, you're you're kind of struggling. And we had headlamp. Oh, so those were great for the bathroom trip in the middle of the night. Um, the best thing that we had was the Jackery. 500 watt solar generator. Uh, we had the just uh, the smallest, what 100 watt panel. I think so. Uh, we'll, we'll put a link or yeah. something. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely tell you exactly what we had. Um, that thing was amazing. We never got below 50 percent, and we had one day that it was cloudy all day. 
and um, yeah, so that people had the little generator, and they didn't have the solar panels, and they would to go up to the charging station and plug them in. Well, that's not bad, but it was much more convenient keep it charged with the solar. Oh, well, that, that thing's not light if on a, you know, two or three, four hundred yard trek. Yeah, know. yeah. I think our, I think our cooler could have been a little bit better. Well, it's, it's an old one, uh, but to save space volume-wise, we use the cooler stuff in it. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, then we just dumped all the ice out this morning pack stuff back in. Yeah, exactly. The other thing, as, as far as the camping goes, when we went there the first day, uh, we went to the wrong supermarket. Actually, right beside uh, the Target is a pick and save, which we'll tell you about. Um, it was a much better option. It You could have bought probably uh, some sandwich stuff, and even if you didn't want to cook, you could have got some sandwich stuff, maybe some pre-made salads or something like that. I think right now. But the store was really nice. Oh, yeah. We went to the, what was it, Aldi? Aldi, and it, it was small and didn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, you do have Wi-Fi. If you're trying to, that's the reason why our videos are going to be a little later. Uh, we couldn't upload anything. No, not of anything at all. And, but, and even just trying to use your phone, if it was a real busy time, it would be so slow. We'd just take it off of Wi-Fi and just use our, our cell. Oh, your data, yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes you just had to do that to, but to load. But all in all, the, the camping, the thing I think I the most about the camping with our camping neighbors. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you know, there's a couple of them we exchange contact information on. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, if you're apprehensive about going, as I was. Yeah. Oh. Apprehensive about camping. Go. Like, oh, yeah. Just go and do it. Uh, you know, everybody says you, you got to go and camp at least once, and then they all get the campers or get a hotel or stay in Appleton and drive. I, I would come back and camp again. It was so convenient, I think, because we just walked and just got there. We didn't have to get in a car and worry about parking or anything like that. So anyway, we liked it. I, I, we enjoyed it. We, we that's the first time we've ever actually camped. We've had an RV before, Hi. but we've never had a tent camp. And uh, I, I thought it was fine. We, well, there are a few different things as we just, we'd be a little bit more prepared for, like, you know, a little bit of weather. Now, granted, it did not come a thunderous thunderstorm or anything, which a lot of people say that's the, the, oh, yeah. the reason why they will never do it again. But uh, I think it's part of the adventure. <laughs> oh, and I will say, too, we had signed uh, at 4 in the morning that a thunderstorm was coming in, and they had this um, PA that announced it and woke us up. And so we went out, kind of secured a few things. It, it was great. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we didn't have to worry about the plane because we had bought those big screw hold down, uh, tie downs. Right. And those things were great. Yeah, yeah we love those. Um, and they're light, very lightweight. Oh, yeah. Oh, the only other thing we need to say about camping is the bathhouses. They, the first day we got there, I went in and the bathrooms were really clean and every I thought, I wonder what happens when the camping area gets full. They had people coming through more than one time a day cleaning the bathrooms. And so I had no problem with how clean they were or anything like that. Even the outhouses. Yeah, they, we heard them. Every morning they came and pumped those things out and, and cleaned them. them. And cleaned them and yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. no no smells from that or anything. I mean so I mean it it was great. Yeah. yeah.
That's that rain we're seeing way out there. Oh, yeah. The Muni Skyline 80 Pump Echo is 10 to the northwest inbound on runway 13, full stop, Washington. Washington Municipal Airport, automated weather observation, 1604 Zulu. Wind, 140 and 8 knots, seat gun, 13 knots, nah, more, more than 10. Sky condition, few and 3,800 at 4,300 at 5,000 temperature 24 Celsius 2.18 Celsius altimeter 3.051 into the mercury Washington Muni Skyline 80 pop goes on a 3 mile final runway 13 full stop Any Skyline Asian Pop and Co. Short final one three full stop. It's from your left now. What is it? Sock? Yes. something. We were right over a bunch of cornfields. <laughs> There's cornfields everywhere. Washington Muni, Skyline Nature, so Pop Echo, clear 1-3, taxi to the ramp. Washington. So it's kind of nice. You can depart 1-8. Yeah. Get on it right there. Okay. So? There's a fuel pumps right there, it looks like. That's where we're hitting. There's a RV over there too. I see that. RV took off in front of us. I remember him. Oh. Um. 